Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Crafty Mom, and today we're gonna do an actual craft. Um, you can use it as a decoration for Halloween, or you can use it because it will be a functional book. So we are gonna do some book binding, and right now I'm gonna show you how to do the covers. Um, they will look like full faux leather. <clears throat> They're just made out of cardboard. This is um, one of the front covers I have done. Um, and again, it will just look like, um, it'll look like it's leather, but it's really not. But they are super durable. Um, I've had mine put together, I will show you in a, another video, my finished products. And I've had them put together and I've used them quite a bit and it's, it's still pretty durable. Um, so let's get started. First things first, you need to, um, the, the pieces on the front, um, we just took a template, traced it with glue, with hot glue, and then just glued it onto our cardboard where we wanted it. Um, but we taped the edges uh, with um, painter's tape to kind of keep that jagged edge from being part of the book. I didn't like how that looked, so we just taped it, taped over it with tape. And what you can see me doing here is actually I'm writing on front and back which pieces I want for the front and which pieces I want for the back. Um, you don't have to do that, but I like to do that because I had specific sizes I wanted. Um, again, just taping over the edges with painter's tape to kind of give it a more um, <coughs> covered look. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and painter's tape was all I had. You can use masking tape. You can even use regular tape if you want to. Just whatever gives it that um, less than rugged edge. Unless you like that look, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm writing on it the front and back so that I know which side I'm doing. Um, and then we're taking little squares of tissue paper and I use Mod Podge for this part to cover. Um, I actually dilute, started diluting down my Mod Podge. So um, you glue on your hot glue um, decoration. And for this one, I glued a piece of cardboard down and then glued that to it. So it kind of gave it a raised effect and it actually looks pretty cool on the finished book. So like I said, um, I actually diluted down my Mod Podge, but we're just taking tissue paper and just kind of roughly putting the Mod Podge down, putting it down and going over it. Um, and actually with this technique, there's no right or wrong to do it, but I can tell you the wrinklier that you get the tissue paper, the better it's gonna look for your leather at the end. And it doesn't matter what color, I mean, obviously we're using pink and green, and I think there's blue in there that we use, red, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm actually blow drying the, the template, or the little icon thing, the, it is called the triple goddess symbol, but I'm actually heating that up so that it will um, adhere or dry faster so I can continue. Um, and again, just little, as you can see is Missy from Kids View is helping me out. And she actually just has a piece of sponge she's using. She's not even using a sponge brush. So I mean, you can use anything like, it's a piece of sponge out of my birch box and my, um, or my boxy charm. I just cut it up and that's what I use it for. Um, so <clears throat> just make sure you cover all of the cardboard. Um, I actually did a couple of layers on some of the books of the tissue paper. And as you'll see later on, there's one book I only did one layer of tissue paper because I liked it like that. But I mean, you can use as much as you want. You can do three or four layers if it's wrinkly enough. Just make sure it's you don't you don't allow it to get um, smooth. You want it as wrinkly and as textured looking as possible. Um, so that's why when we were doing the hot glue template, the hot glue symbol, in this case it's the triple goddess symbol, um, we didn't mind if it was a little jagged and rugged and, and all of that. In another video I will show you how we actually created those. I will actually um, make one and show you how we did it. Um, it's for my daughter's book um, that she wanted. Um, we actually, I created these um, we created these for art books so that my kids could um, work on their creativity and just be able to be 
they're, they're obsessed with certain things in their lives right now and so it's a way to keep track of all of their memories from like my son he loves cars so it's a way for him to keep track of all his favorite cars in a book um, so that he can go back and look on it and enjoy it and um, my daughter she likes supernatural right now so a lot of hers is supernatural related um, the, the TV show supernatural I don't know if any of you have ever seen it but it actually is quite a quite a cool show but um, she's quite obsessed with it and it's a way for her to keep track of all of her um, things that she likes. I'm hoping someday she'll outgrow it, but I don't know. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, you do want to go over the sides a little bit to kind of smooth out that you don't want like it just to end. So you want to go over the sides about an inch. You don't have to do the whole inside because I'll, I will be covering that in another video and I'll show you how we'll be co covering that. Um, but you do want to go over the edges a little bit. And I'm sorry about my pink mat. It looks terrible. Uh, I need to figure out how to clean it. Um, it looks awful, but for now. I mean, we're and, and the glue that I'm using to glue things down is just the Elmer's glue all. It's not tacky glue. It's not super glue. It's just the regular old school glue. Um, and it works fine. And like I said, for the tissue paper, it's the we're using Mod Podge from the dollar store. So I mean, you don't need to have anything super expensive for this project, but it comes out looking very cool. And like I said, you can make these um, to actually use as art books, or you can make them <clears throat> to just be Halloween decorations. They are very cool. Um, we for for some of it, we we used recycled materials and, and for the book binding that's what we did and I'll show you how we bound our books there's a couple of different ways that I did it um, I actually made I made three books of my own and then I helped my son and my daughter make theirs and then I made one for my mom and so <clears throat> Like I said, you can add as many layers of the tissue paper as you like. Um, I believe on this one <clears throat> we did two. Sorry, I think I'm getting sick, so I apologize for all of the throat clearing on this. Um, two layers of the tissue paper. And the tissue paper we just got from the dollar store. Um, and then, like I said, the covers are just made of cardboard that we are recycling. So, I mean, it's kind of an inexpensive project I think the most expensive part was the paper we used and even that wasn't it was paper we had but it, it can be kind of pricey if you're buying it for this project I guess um, it's just regular old computer paper and you'll we just um, changed color colored it all right so now we're doing a base coat of black acrylic paint you can use watercolor on this but it's not as opaque um, we used acrylics and you want to make sure every nook and cranny of this book is covered in the black. That's going to be key to making it look like the leather. Is definitely making sure you get this covered really well. And I think I'm using just the 50 cent um, paint from Walmart. The like apple orchard I think is what it's called. And it's in the color licorice so it's the darkest black I could find um, but it's paint I had on hand you can use um, any kind of acrylic paint that you want um, as you can see there's the acrylic paint from Michaels on the table but we had more black in my paint from Walmart and I didn't want to use a whole bunch of the little tubes so we're just using the black acrylic paint and it actually dries fairly quickly so this project doesn't take long to <clears throat> finish the covers um, it, it can be time-consuming I believe for one book it took me approximately three days to complete from start to finish and that's just because there is some drying time and you'll see that in the next but um, you'll, you'll see 
in future videos that it can be time consuming. Um, so I mean, don't don't expect this to be a one and done. But I mean, it can be if you decide to sew your book rather than glue it, like I did. It can be you can be finished fairly quickly. So I mean, it can be a fast book, fast thing. But it does take a little bit of time to sew the book book um, pages together. But it could be it could you could be done faster because you don't have the drying time of the glue. Um, and also how we stain, how we dyed our pages um, took a little bit of time. Um, again, now on the back, I'm just painting the back black. Um, you do want to as well take this paint and go um, about an inch on the inside cover, just because that way it looks leather on the inside as well. I mean, again, you don't need to go and do the whole inside cover because you will be covering that. With something else but um, you want to do about an inch where the paper is not going to cut or where it's not going to be covered um, or any pieces that might show out I, I didn't do that with this one and I went back in once I had the book together and actually did paint the rest of it because I thought it looked better Now bear in mind, I did speed up the footage, so I'm really not super painter. I this did take me a little bit of time. I believe this the two covers. Actually, I think I painted two sets of covers on this route, and then my my daughter painted her covers. I believe it took us about two hours from start to finish to complete. Um, now you see me going in. This is actually a navy blue, and I'm just kind of stippling this on in little spots and basically you're just adding light on there um but again this is a navy blue and I, you really can't really see it um but it does add some light texture in there um and the theory is you just go from darkest to lightest so we did the black now we're doing the navy blue and then we'll go in with some lighter colors and, and you'll see how how interesting it actually does make it and I apologize about the cup of water sitting there it's kind of gross but I didn't realize that was what was mainly in the camera footage um, I apologize for that but I mean you can kind of see the idea of what we're doing and so I just add a little bit of paint and then I kind of dab it off I don't dab the whole thing off you do want some of the color to stay on I mean you can kind of see it the blue on there um, you do want some of the color to stay but you want to remove some of it so it's not as thick so you can see the black underneath it and again this is just um, the cheap acrylic paint in the bottles at Walmart that I'm using And I'm just adding it on with a paintbrush, obviously. Okay, the next thing that we're using, I believe is the Burnt Umber, which is like a brown, yeah. This is the, I think it's Burnt Umber that we're using. But anyway, it's a red brown, so you can use mahogany, you can use um, Burnt, well, I think Sienna has got a little bit of a different color to it. Um, but you want something with like a reddish brown color to it. Um, and this one I think is burnt umber. And we are actually using um, artist acrylic paints from Michaels or Hobby Lobby, whatever you have near you. Um, and you just, again, stippling on a little bit and then wiping it off. Putting it on, wiping it off. That's just the technique that you're going to be using. You may go through a lot of paper towels, and I apologize for that, but it has a cool effect in the end. And you want to pay attention to where you would have light and darkness. So you want to make sure the dark stays dark and the light um, you gradually lighten as you go. Now we're going in with some yellow ochre, 
but I've also used a tan, um, like a, yeah, I believe it was a tan color, but this is yellow ochre that we're currently using, and I, again, you just stipple it on, and then take it off. And you can actually thin this out quite a bit. You don't need a whole lot. Um, but you put it on, wipe it off. Put it on, wipe it off. And again, like I said, you're trying to make the light get light and the dark get dark. So you're just wanting to pay attention to the raised areas of, <clears throat> of your book, of where you, you want the light to be at. So you put it on and you take it off. Put it on, take it off. I know, I keep repeating myself on that, but that is definitely the technique and it, it ends up looking very old and distressed and rugged. And now I'm going into my details on my thing and I want it to kind of pop, so I'm just paying more attention to the top part and trying to get it out of the inside. Because I want that inside piece to stay dark so that it will make the rest of it pop. And as you can see, my, my details are starting to come out. what color we're using here. Oh, this one is, I think it's going back to the, the burnt umber. I, I don't really know what color this is. I can't remember for sure. It's been a little while since I did this video. Um, but you just, it's the reddish brown color that we used. And again, you just want to kind of darken it up. This is going back through, so it's going to take, and I didn't like how much yellow was on there, or how much of the yellow ochre so I'm going back in and just kind of darkening back up where I didn't where I think thought I got too much yellow because I didn't want to take it way dark and go back in with a black but I did want to darken it up just a bit and I'm paying special attention to that um, piece that I put the um, symbol on so that it looks like it's two separate pieces, so it looks like somebody meant to add a separate piece to it, like a leather strap or something. Um, that's kind of what I was going for. And I believe I'm liking what I'm seeing, and so now I'm taking some metallic gold paint and I'm going to actually highlight just the raised portion of my symbol just so it kind of stands up off the, the book. And so it looks like it um, is in gold foil. And again, it's the metallic gold from Walmart. I believe I spent a dollar thirty on it because the metallics are a little more expensive. Um, but I mean, I'm not doing anything super um, precise. Like I'm not. I, I kind of wanted it to look like it was old and distressed and kind of worn and I'd used the, it had been used. That was the look I was going for. But if you want it more precise and more exact, by all means, you can. Um, fix it up with an exacto knife and get like all the precise little lines and everything but I didn't really want that I wanted it to look old um, and now we're gonna do the back side um, again it's just the same techniques you paint it black um, you go over it with black paint and then just do the stippling effect um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here Reset. Oh, I'm showing that you. I, I see what I'm doing. I'm showing you that you can actually speed up the drying time by using a hair dryer or a heat gun um, for the. And I was using a, the backside of a paintbrush to get into my detail a little more. You can kind of push it down because it will kind of raise up over your symbol and kind of flatten out your symbol. So you want to make sure you push it down in there. Um, and, and get all of the little grooves. But you can speed up your drying time with a blow dryer. It cuts drying time down immensely. So. Uh, 
that's just what I'm doing is blow drying it um, to try to get it so I can show you all in one video the next oh I spilled glue on the table I apologize for that and now we are going in with the black and the blue and like I said uh, I'm just showing you once again how to do this um, so I will just let you watch You want to make sure you pay close attention to the edges as well. You don't want any pink sticking out. It kind of destroys the effect you're going for. Pink or green when you're looking for a distressed look or a vintage look. It kind of takes away from the, the technique you're looking for. For all you um, people who practice paganism or Wicca or things like that, you can also use this as a book of shadows. <clears throat> they look very cool with um, uh, coffee stained pages or tea stained pages inside. Um, that's not exactly, I mean I did that with some of my books, but you'll see how I did the pages. Um, I actually really like. The one book that I the the one that I'm currently working on here I like the pages that I did for it, and like I said in a in, a, in the next video, um, because this is going to be I believe a three part video, um, series, I will show you how I stained my my pages, um, how I bound the book, and then the finished project product, and then um, throughout I will come back to these and show you how I work in my books. Because like I said, I, I'm making these as art books, so they will be kind of art book slash junk journal, so I will do some pages with you in these books, but... I know this is very ambitious for a junk journal, but um, th that's the closest thing I can think of. Um, you'll understand when I when you watch the next video um, this particular one I'm doing here is going to actually be like a memory book a memory journal um, whereas I will put in there um, things that I remember that I did from my childhood and things that I do now as an adult with my own children and just things that I would like maybe future generations to remember or to know because um, more Often than not, we take for granted the amount of time we have on this planet, and sometimes things are forgotten when the person passes away, and I, d I don't want that to happen. I mean, there's too many things that I've had passed down to me that I would like my children to remember, and this is my way of doing that. Um, I know there's been a few, few of the the elders, as you can call it, or older people in our family that have passed on that I really wished we could have gotten some of their stories and some of their life history and things documented better than what we do um, currently, or even just recorded their voice or gotten a sample of their handwriting, you know, just things like that, that the small things that you end up missing after a while <laughs> that you don't realize that you do miss. Um, I, I want 
I want things passed down to my kids, like recipes and and, and that's what this book is going to be, is a memory book. Um, I, I have one that I'm going to put pictures and talk about each family member or friend or people who have come into our lives that were important to us. Um, so it's kind of like a scrapbook, but not really. Um, but this particular one, like I said, is going to be things that I was taught for, um, for example, for Halloween. Uh, I have a whole, sec a whole page on Halloween and it's going to be traditions that I did as a kid for Halloween because I'm an 80s kid. I grew up during the 80s and things during the 80s were a lot different than they are now. And so I want to, I want things that my kids can look back on and go, wow, my mom got to do that, you know? I mean, I remember my mom letting us out to go trick or treating as soon as it got dark and just saying, okay, well, you know, be safe and us being out until like midnight you know I would never do that with my children now I mean I would be out there with them but you know my mom back then it was a different time you know but then we also had incidences where I remember my mom having to take our candy to the hospital and have it x-rayed because there might be razor blades or or something in the candy you know I, just things like that is I, I think would be fun for the kids to look back on and reminisce and go, wow, my mom had it different than I did. Um, things are, were way different back then. Or, you know, the fact that I'm older than, than you know, Google. <laughs> or, you know, the computers that we got to work on um, were like dinosaur computers. You know, just things like that. Just fun things like that that they can look back on and go, I'm glad my mom did this for me. That, that's what the purpose of this particular book that I'm currently working on is for. Now, I'm not saying that you need to do that. You could totally just make these as Halloween decorations if you wanted to. I mean, these covers could go over an existing book and you could just put them on your shelf and, and it could just be a Halloween decoration. That's totally fine. I mean, you could... As soon as you're done with your cover, you could glue it onto a hardback book and call it good. And you would never have to, I mean, just pull it out for decorations. I mean, that's, that's totally fine too. They don't have to be functional. Um, here's the one that I only did one layer on and I wanted to show you a different way of doing the cover. This one, I didn't use the glue template. I just cut a, a heart out of cardboard. Um, and I'm just using plain white um, tissue paper for it. But again, this is just another way of doing it. So you don't have to have the super glue if you don't have it. I mean, that's totally fine. You can just cut shapes out of um, cardboard and it will work fine as well. And I believe this tissue paper was actually tissue paper that came in an Ipsy box. Or not an Ipsy box, a birch box. Um, and so I just cut it up to recycle it. I mean, you always get those... I, birch box does wrap their their packages quite nicely with all of the stuff nice and neat in the tissue, in tissue paper and then in a box. But I always find it a shame to waste the tissue paper. So I save it and I think... Stay tuned for video two and thanks for watching. Bye.